one today. Uh, I can start off by thanking John Israel. I got a cube in the back back there. It's a thermal zone cube. It's a ream-like instrument. Uh, he turned me on to getting one of the cubes, said uh, they were lower cost dry charge unit, which is what I had to have uh, for a particular job. Very similar to his. Uh, or just a little old lady, doesn't have any money. Just had a, some new stuff installed. It was hacked up. All hacks must die. It was that stuff. So we're gonna replace that outdoor unit, and blow out that coil, and switch our, switch our TXV to a piston. Uh, just simplify, basically. But that's not what we're doing today. We're going to a call for no cooling. I was just there about a month ago because the condenser was leaking refrigerant, and it is not cooling again. I don't know if we're leaking refrigerant or what, but we are going to see what's going down, and you guys are gonna follow along for the ride. This is call number six. Fire. A lot of times on things like this where I'm just gassing the unit up, I will just kind of get a mock superheat in my head based on what I think the superheat is. And although that might sound accurate, it's actually pretty close to typical superheat. Because I'll take like an 80 degree indoor temperature, I'll just take 10 off of it and make it a 70 my wet bowl. This is arbitrary, just based on things that I've experienced in my career. And I come up with a superheat that I can use until I make the repair. It's uh, not scientific, but it's pretty close. And it allows me to move the call a little bit quicker and not take a bunch of temperatures, which are needless because the repair will be in a few days and there's no point to it. And there's, you know, more calls to come. As you see guys, we got a little bit of sweat back. We're at one pound, eight ounces. And looks like we're 42 degrees of superheat, so we're not quite there yet where we want to be. 244, the head's going to be a little bit higher because it's a 10 sear machine. So we are going to add a little bit more refrigerant. I think we'll be about right until we make that repair. Looks like we got pretty close. This will hold us over until we got our repair there. It's a little bit high superheat. And we got some sub cooling coming in there. 260 head over 78. So we'll go ahead and replace that coil. And we should be good to go then. Got ourselves another beautiful North Carolina day. Wide open fields. I love the country. It's where I belong. But it's cool. It's cool. I bought the sprawling tool today. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. I like the convenience of the tool, and I know it doesn't have the tools that the iManifold or iConnect give somebody, but it's nice to have a convenient set of gauges that can still give you your superheat subcooling, have the no wires, wireless clamps. It's, it's really cool to have those features sometimes over the extra information. Uh, like what I just did was putting refrigerant into a unit on the go. Didn't have to be exact. I used the exact uh, ambiguous charging method where I grab a superheat from the air as it passes by and use that number. But I mean, it'll be close. Uh, just because I've done those superheat calculations over the years, I, you know, I'll get within five, I'm sure. I think that's a tolerance. But I like the convenience of it. It's something that I wanted, and I'm the kind of guy that when I get my mind set on something, it's like tunnel vision almost, so I bit the bullet. I went in there, I tried to wheel or deal because I bought a, a ream-like cube from United Refrigeration. And I tried to say, drop the price of both the tool and the cube. I'll buy them both here today. Like I didn't have to have it. But in my gut, I knew I wanted to buy that thing. So the next day I came back and bought it. I really enjoyed using it. I've used it on three calls today. One was a quick check. I was just verifying the unit was working. It's so hot out today. People are thinking that, hey, my AC is broken when it's lagging behind. When in all actuality, it's just fine. So I used it on that call. I used it, I went to my sister's house and looked at her unit they are hardy do-it-yourselfers so I was just showing them some of the ways they can correct some issues with their unit and last but not least I recharged the unit the Goodman unit at the trailer park so pretty good I might use it one more time on the old GE stay tuned and maybe on a different video if it's interesting